Pesach 5780, 2020, is turning out to be a unique Pesach with its own challenges. We'll try to address a number of them to make life a bit easier. Perhaps first and foremost, with a virus circulating, is hand sanitizer. That any type of hand sanitizer, although preferable to buy before Pesach, is recommended and is fine for Pesach. Some changes, water, including smart water, a artesian water, simple water, generally speaking is fine for Pesach. They, if it just says water in the ingredients, that's fine. If it has minerals, it's still all right. We just have to be careful what the minerals are. If they are citric acid, that's a problem. That could be kidney or chametz, and therefore that should not be used. But other than that, it's fine. A bit of a change on wine. Most wines, in particular the OU wines, uh, have on them instructions if they are mavushal, cooked wines, or not cooked wines. That's not always the case. And as of recently, the OU says that one should assume, if it doesn't say if the wine was cooked, mavushal, or not, assume it is not, in which case it has all of the halachas that would accompany that. And we want to be careful who is handling it and who is pouring it. But it also, for those in particular, for the Dalit Kosos, some people want not mavushal. Assume it is not, unless it is. This wine, a Dalton wine, says very clearly on a kosher for Passover, not mavushal, which, of course, makes it easier, but many don't at all. There are products, in particular Costco, or some different types of fruits and vegetables that have an OU on them. And people have questioned whether they need ashkoch, if it's just an orange or a pomelo and so on. And the primary advantage that we find is that many are coming from Eretz Yisrael, which means that we need to take trumas, maestras, many different things in order to, whether we can use, we have to worry about shmita. If it does have an OU, the OU does have an agreement with Eretz Yisrael. Whatever they bring in is post truma Meiser, is not Shemitah, and so on, and therefore can be used without any further uh, procedures. That is uh, fine. I, till now, when it came to uh, pet food, many people worry about their pets, We've used either, we have a long list and printed and it's online, uh, which ones do not have basar b'chalav, meat and milk, and they don't have as well any chametz in them. And then it's okay to give to the, to the animal, to the pet, obviously. They don't need to have kosher. All they need to have is we are not allowed, the owner is not allowed to have, even in fish food, uh, any chametz or meat and milk. So there's a long list of those. To make life easier, a few years ago, the CRC from Chicago started certifying non-kosher meat in a can designated for dogs and cats without hummus and without milk and meat. And it says on it, not kosher, but it's very fine to give to animals and makes life simple. The OU this is certifying a new product. It's called Kosher Paws. Kosher Paws is, says on it, ironically, this one is turkey, this one for dogs, for cats. No kidneyos or gabrachs OUP. The difference is this is actually fit for human consumption. A person could share their meal with their animal if they wish, and that would be halachically acceptable, a bit odd, but in any case, these are, uh, it's a new product for those who wish to simplify to that degree. There's a company called Wellbees, and many of the products on this table are from a company called koshervitamins.com. They have many of the unusual uh, or natural uh, products. 
This is well be gelatin. So if one wishes to make this is a certified kosher le Pesach, uh, specifically, and it is reliable, this is a product that if wish, one wishes to make from scratch uh, a jello, then that certainly would work. An unusual product that I found in a liquid, it's going around in the yeshivas, that it's a tin, which of course is fine for Pesach and all year. It's made with a hole on the bottom. This is made so that one can put some food inside on Shabbos. The hole fits over a crock pot, and then it will be a clean, got be clean, and that makes it where it's fine for using even on Shabbos, one could put it right on top of, of it. Unusual product, but it does have its uh, use. In kashering stove tops, there are different types. There's a ceramic type that's all glass, with, usually with flowers on the burners. And the, there are other ones that have ceramic in the middle, even if they're gas or electric. And that area can't be koshered. One, after covering with aluminum foil, one product that it makes life a bit easier is buying a trivet, buying some sort of a small shelf. They're very inexpensive. And then when the hot food is taken off the burner, it can be placed right on this. It's raised a bit, and that keeps everything uh, quite kosher. Uh, the stevia is a product that due to the method that it's made could be a kidneyos issue, but there's quite a bit again at kosher vitamins and at Wellbees and many other places where one can get it. As all year, it remains an issue buying, utilizing any sort of vegetables that it is leafy and that may have bugs. There's a product sterile certified by the Badats uh, for Pesach all year and for Pesach, and that they're actually guaranteeing will remove all bugs. It's very slippery, it goes, it's diluted, goes a bit into water, and it manages to have the bugs slip off. Maple syrup is, again, a bit of a challenge to find with Ashkoch for Pesach. It does need it because of the processing, the cooking process and the machinery that's being used. Adirondex has a Huff KP, is available again on various uh, sites for people to get. There are different flowers available, many types. This is a pecan flower that is made for Pesach. A common new one this year is a plantain multi purpose flower that they say is good for cookies and so on. There's chia seed and quinoa. Now, quinoa. We have to be a little bit more careful than in previous years. First of all, it does need certification. It's been found to grow often right near the fields that are used for wheat. So we have to make sure it's not downwind, it's away from such fields. However, there are a number of ones that are certified. And those are gold bombs, Pereg, and others that are certified for Pesach. They do need the certification for Pesach. And, but with it, nevertheless, it's preferable to check for infestation. There was an infestation not long ago. It's not much now, but nevertheless, it is a good idea to check to make sure that there's no infestation uh, in it. There's a beef jerky by Exodus Foods of many different types. Again, uh, certified, this one is Star KP. Now we have to keep in mind all the different certifications. There's OUP, Star KP, there's about 13, 1400 different certifications, of which at least 1,000 are recommended on reliable. The, but they've gone off into tangents now. The Star K has a Star S and a Star D. The Star D of the Star K means that it's not Cholobisol. Star KD means it is Cholobisol. Star S means that it is acceptable for Svardim. And star S with a K, with a, a kidneyos, saying kidneyos uh, is acceptable for those Svardim who have kidneyos. 
many of the star K products that have a star S are highly acceptable Tashkenazim as well, such as the meat, it will be the Chumras of Bet Yosef and of the Rambah, and really it crosses over. We've listed which ones meet uh, both uh, criteria. Water as well as seltzer water or the various names that people use for it, such as Perrier, is fine when it's unflavored and again without any citric acid. That is important to remember they should be without. Eggs are an interesting product that our eggs that we get commonly, even in the health food stores today, are unfertilized eggs. They are what the Gemara calls safna da'ara, from pecking on the ground. And therefore, the blood, occurrences of blood being in eggs is much diminished, and it's better for everyone, certainly in halacha. There are eggs now that are pasteurized. Uh, the first question is, does that mean they're cooked by goyim? Is that bishalakum? The answer is no. It's flash pasteurization, three seconds, and it just makes it that it is killing microorganisms, but it's not at all cooking the egg. For Pesach, not a concern at all. There is, the only concern we have now is the same that we've had for hundreds of years, and that's that typically the a, chickens are being fed what could be kidneys, could be chametz, and therefore some could get on the eggs, as well as the fact it's a product of, when they lay it, of, of uh, the chametz, and therefore the minig is to buy them before Pesach. If a person can't, then the best way to treat it is right after the starim, cholamayd, to go shopping, and find what is still available from previous production. That's fine. We, one needn't own it as long as it was laid before and already cleaned up before Pesach. It is absolutely fine. Uh, Reynolds wrap, any type of aluminum foil, no matter what type it is, is kosher for Pesach automatically with certification, no certification. One side is shiny because of the pressure of the roller. It has nothing to do with anything put on it, and therefore they are always fine. Parchment paper does need hashkacha all year so that they're not using any sort of non-kosher ingredient, which definitely is used on some. It's a pig fat and therefore it cannot be used. However, Reynolds, this is the simplest to find in stores, the Reynolds parchment paper is kosher all year and kosher for uh, Pesach as well. There's such a thing as these are extra heavy duty challah bags. Most people just call it a plastic bag. It makes no difference what you call it. Either way, the plastic is always fine. But regular plastic bags, regular uh, type of uh, paper bags, like what we call lunch bags, those are fine for Pesach. The um, napkins, again, all types. Sometimes people feel <clears throat> they wish to go very overboard. And Pesach is an odd time, whereas normally we view Ksil Bechay person who goes overboard is called foolish. Pesach, there is chumra de pischa, but even that has a limit. And definitely certain things, one should not make Pesach into an undue, <coughs> into an undue hardship. This is a pull-out faucet cover for Pesach. We don't need a faucet cover. One cleans it well, and it will continue to be utilized as a uh, faucet. When it comes to spices, there is an issue that most companies have consolidated. So they're doing in the same, let's say shilling, we're doing the same massive machinery, a great deal of uh, different spices, which can include kidneys, it could even in theory include comets. Therefore, with the emulsification, we're concerned, and it doesn't. the ground spices do need certification for pesa. However, if it's whole, this is black peppercorns, let's say, or if it's 
such as these, where there are whole cinnamon sticks and they have not been crushed, they're, they're fine without any hashgacha whatsoever during the year and for Pesach. When it comes to uh, grape juice, there's different types, many different types. There's organic grape juice, which is uh, sold by uh, Kedem. There's a common, the common grape juice, which is kosher for Kiddush. And then there is the 150 uh, or the 50.7 ounce uh, glass bottle which is unusual in the fact that it is made by Kedem, by Rosh, and many companies as a non mavushal product. This is non mavushal The reason they make it non mavushal is that some people who have difficulty drinking four cups of wine may add some of this or stick exclusively to non mavushal wine. There are opinions that say that non mavushal grape juice is potential wine, since it hasn't been pasteurized to the point of killing the enzymes, it could become wine if one added yeast to it. And therefore, it's good enough to use for the starring. Uh, nesting, in general, is the only uh, regular, unsweetened instant tea that is all right. Only the unsweetened and not the decaf, the regular is fine. On the other hand, Lipton tea bags are fine and regular and decaf, and that's true of the sweet uh as well. When it comes to, we'll find that there's a uh, Welch's Manischewitz kosher grape juice, and it's certified OUP. They, they became partners and mixed the two companies, which in any case is, open, is owned now by Keiko, a different company that bought Manischewitz, and that is certified uh, for PESA. Comes to sugar, any of the plain white sugars are fine. It doesn't matter which one. They're all uh, kosher for PESA, kosher and kosher for PESA. When it comes to confection sugar, for baking, that needs a good certification for Pesach. There's usually cornstarch. When it comes to brown sugar, the processing can be an issue. However, it's quite easy to find the CNH and Domino, the two largest brands, are always certified OKP the entire year, and therefore it's available everywhere. The uh, dental floss that is not flavored uh, is uh, fine. When it comes to nuts, most of the raw nuts, the key is to look at the ingredients and to see that the nuts do not contain BHA or BHT. BHA and BHT are preservatives that on their own are not an issue. The only issue that we do have is they need a glue to stick on and the glue that's being used is cornstarch and therefore kidneys. Uh, on the other hand, most plain, raw nuts, almonds, and even pecans are fine. Even pecans are fine if they are uh, halves, wholes, not pieces though. Pecans are bitter, and once they're in pieces, they're already washed with a kidneys coating, and that becomes a problem. But other than that, even the halves uh, are fine to use. The, the Hershey's cocoa is fine all year. It's OU and it's fine for uh, PESA as well. When it comes to instant, instant coffee has become an issue due to the micro encapsulation of each, each little powdered piece. In order to retain the flavor, they are now micro-encapsulated and often with a material that we can't use on Pesach, chametz or kidneys. Therefore, they need a hashkoch. The Nescafe, the plain Nescafe that, that we find, is fine for Pesach and 
Uh, one can find it everywhere. Some have hashgacha, odd hashgacha. It'll go from the United States to England to Israel and back and become much more expensive. Or just a plain unflavored Nescafe is the same thing and is perfectly, perfectly fine. All year round in the refrigerated area, usually near the eggs of supermarkets, there's Kroger's uh, in the Ralph's and there are Papetti in every store, which is egg whites certified OUP. The entire year it's certified OUP, and that can be a, uh, a helpful product. The, uh, for those who are eating too much may need them. The Tums are certified for all year with a, with a diamond K. It's reliable, and they're fine for Pesach. When it comes to plates and so on, if it's styrofoam or these, which are bamboo, uh, and some are even made out of kidneyos uh, products, the uh, disposable plates or plastic plates and plastic wear, those are all fine for Pesach. They can be used. When it comes to, there are things like Chinette that some are careful, and those actually have an OKP on them uh, as well. Gloves, of which many people are using today, uh, should be unpowdered. The powder is usually a cornstarch, could be an oatmeal. In any case, it should not be used unless it says on the box that they are unpowdered uh, gloves, in which case, all of them uh, are fine. The, when it comes to Real Lemon, Real Lime, that's the name of the company, Real Lemon, Real Lime, uh, they have a plain OU on them. They are recommended for Pesach. They're fine uh, to use. However, be careful because in many stores they have other brands. Those brands can be from Israel, need Trumasomysteris, and it could be many of them are not kosher, not kosher for Pesach uh, as well. Uh, Sanka remains, Sanka coffee remains that it is in all types uh, kosher le Pesach, and uh, that one is very fine. Folgers coffee is recommended in regular and decaf without a P on it. At Via from Starbucks, Via regular instant, is recommended as well. When it comes to ground coffee, if it's unflavored, plain, not the decaf, it's fine. If it's decaf, we've listed numerous ones that are okay, but certainly many are not. The salt, there's different types of salt. This is a sea salt, there's regular salt, which is mine salt, this is a Himalayan pink salt, the salt in general, if it's a mine salt, it's just called salt or the Himalayan, without additives is fine for Pesach. If it does have in it, in, in particular, any sort of additives that it says that it does have iodine, and iodine, iodine again is a product that is not a problem for Pesach, but it's glued on with kidneyos and therefore becomes a problem. But if it is as this one, that says this salt does not supply iodide, a necessary nutrient, then it means it's just pure salt. The only thing to keep in mind with this particular one that I'm holding, which is a sea salt, it is not mavushal. It is dried in the sun. Since it wasn't cooked, one has to consider putting it on a dober gush on Shabbos, a solid piece of meat, which could cook it. Mine salt has already been cooked, and we don't have to worry about it as much. But this is an uncooked raw salt because it is a sea salt, and therefore it is an issue. Although it looks like an odd product, this is a cigar that is certified KSAP, kosher for Pesach. That in itself didn't need it. The cigars are actually, they are smoked. Cigarettes are smoke, although we don't recommend either one for health reasons, but for Pesach, they are not an issue. On the other hand, for Moshe Sternbach, 
Daf Beis in Yerushalayim has tested and halachically paskened that vaping e-cigarettes, and since it makes a vapor, that's like eating. That's not smoke. In which case, that has all the halachas of food. Many, uh, most of the flavored e-cigarettes that vaping are not kosher for Pesach, and and many are not kosher all year since they are from a grape juice or a wine fragrance. And again, the vapor gets into the person and has halachas of food. The sugar, plain white sugar, again, as we had said, is fine. The ubets, uh, chocolate syrup, many other types of, of uh, syrups that they make, will have an OU or OUP. One should be careful. You used to have a K and a KP. If you find an older product with a K, it is recommended. That was a good one of the few good Ks. However, it does need for Pesach a P next to it. If it has an OU, it's only for the year. It does need the P on it. It depends on the flavoring that is being used. To a degree, that's what we have with Joiva. Joiva products that contain uh, a uh, chocolate and marshmallow, the marshmallow rings, uh, have a confusing certification process. During the year, they are very reliably certified by the Chavke. Comes Pesach, they drop the Chavke just for a few weeks and put instead a K from Rabbi Sheinkoff. The, it used to be, many years ago, that meant a non-kosher source gelatin as well as uh, kitneos pudding corn syrup. Now it no longer means that. Now it means that they will add kitneos, but keep to the kosher type of gelatin that the chafke uses. What that means is that after Pesach, that product is fine even though it has a K on it, but really at that point reverts to being a Chav K. During Pesach, the product is fine for anyone who is allowed to eat kidneys. But, and before Pesach, when it's out already at this time, again, it's okay up until Pesach when it will contain uh, kidneys. The, the OU's way of doing uh, items that are kidneys is to call it kidney. Generally, most of their products are that, or they will say all your kidneys on them uh, very uh, clearly. One has to be careful. There are certain products like Elmer's, some of the Elmer's uh, finger paints. Most of the Elmer's finger paints are contain chametz. They contain dough. Crayola makes a number of things as well that are us are on Pesach because they're also, they contain dough. They will usually list it in the uh, ingredients. Uh, as a coffee whitener, there are different types. This one is a blue diamond with an OU and no hashkocha for Pesach. It's all right for uh, those who are allowed to have kidneys, which may include very young children, the elderly, and so on. It is not okay for anyone else. On the other hand, Lieber's makes one that is kosher le Pesach and uh, is good for everyone as a coffee uh, whitener. Why don't you be careful when shopping? This is a general rule, the, in particular this year where food is flying off the shelves and people are hoarding, that the uh, people who are managing the store are trying to put product back on as quickly as they can. Some of it in the pestle section is chametz. Some of it is kidneys. Some of it can even not be kosher where people are depositing it. It is our responsibility when picking up something in a supermarket to make sure that the product is truly certified kosher and kosher for Pesach. Uh, Talmud cubes uh, say very clearly what they are. This particular one is OUP. Right next to it, I've often found OU. 
and sometimes other brands uh, as well. And this is a nice product, the Pompeian Grapeseed Oil and Avocado Seed Oil, Star K certified, and has a Star K. No P, it's fine, no P needed. The Star K says that both are avocado spray, as well as spray cooking oil, as well as the grapeseed, are fine for PESA. It remains generally that a pure extra virgin olive oil is fine for PESA. When it comes to coconut oil, there is no such thing. The coconut oil is rather like this spectrum. It's called virgin. They have a different grade. There's extra virgin and virgin and pure in olive oil, and only the extra virgin is untouched, uncontaminated by the cooking. And in coconut oil, which are also is fine for Pesach, we are looking for the virgin coconut oil, and that will be fine as well. Vegetables need hashgach or frozen vegetables for Pesach due to the fact that they're often blanchers are being used for pasta and for this. On the other hand, if it is just plain fruit, if it is a uh, melon balls without a citric acid, without flavoring, it's just the out of which it's common in supermarkets to find, that's fine for Pesach and a very good product uh, for people to find. The matzah, uh, the staple and basic of what Pesach is all about, uh, we have to be careful what we're getting. There is, this is a shmura matzah, a, uh, a machine shmura matzah. Hand or machine is a long time dispute which one is better. Many Yekis prefer only the machine, some people hand, and whichever one with a good ashgacha, they're fine. But then we have to look, there's a gluten-free matzah, and this one is a very expensive machine-made gluten-free oat matzah, this for those, and this one is shmura matzah. The point for this is those people who can't have gluten will use this. Others should not, but, uh, but some people who need it will use this for the story. On the other hand, we have a gluten-free matzah style, which is very common, and these are shahako. These aren't even hamotzi. Good thing about them is, since they're not hamotzi, People can actually nibble on them, Erev Pesach, when they're hungry, and use them otherwise, can even uh, eat them out of a sukkah when it comes to it, because they are shahakal matzahs. The Geffen puts on it very clearly, gluten-free shahakal matzah, and therefore those are quite uh, helpful uh, under the circumstances. Then there's egg matzah, which Ashkenazim do not use for Pesach, and we have to be careful only for some people who need it. And above all, and I find almost every supermarket has this intermittently, the ones that are chametz. Many matzahs are made during the year chametz, and just because they look the same, they are chametz. We have to be extremely careful when we view them. I hope this video will help people for this year Pesach, and the, one can look at kosherquest.org and find a great deal more listings of products and products to be cautious of, products that will help as well. And I can be reached additionally uh, at 818-262-5351. Have a kosher Pesach.